controversy in India as hijabi students barred from classes. On January 17th, six students of the government women's pre-university college in Karnataka, India, were once again denied entry into their classrooms for wearing hijab. A Twitter post showing six girls attempting to study while barred from their classroom went viral. The girls have not been allowed to join their classes since December 31st, uh, 2021. The students also reported that they are not allowed to speak Urdu, uh, Bari, which is a Dravidian language uh, spoken by Muslims in the state, or Arabic within the school's premises. Yashal Paul, no, Yashpal Survana, um, vice president of the College Development Committee, clarified that the girls violated the school's uniform policy, which was introduced to offer an Egalian approach to education. K. Uh, Raghupati Bhatt, chairman of College Development Committee, said that the students should consider going to a different school if they are unwilling to follow the dress code. So this has become actually a surprisingly huge story in India. Um, this, like I said, has been evolving over a series of weeks, and I was aware of it when it first happened, and then it's continued to pick up a lot of steam um, in uh the past few weeks and it's actually starting to get pretty big attention um the fact that these six girls they basically they want to attend class wearing the hijab they're not allowed to enter the classroom when they do so and so what they do instead is they take notes that they got from their classmates and try to teach themselves the content meanwhile while they're attempting to attend class they are repeatedly marked as absent and they say that they were pressured into signing a letter that says oh yes we actually have been completely absent from classes like we're just completely you know um you know not going to class and all not attending um they say that they were pressured into basically signing a false letter stating these things now like i said they were all they also accused the school of not allowing them to speak urdu berry or arabic however the school administrators um completely deny these claims and um the issue at hand is that they are violating the school's uniform policies. I mean, I kind of think that I'm on the side of the school here for this one, like unlike the France one, which is coming from the government and it wasn't even in a school or a public school. Um, it was, you know, that one was ridiculous when it comes to like not being able to wear the hijab in private sports competitions. This one is not even coming from government. This is a school they have a dress code and i mean is it easy to go to another school like is it is, are finding alternative schools difficult in that area i'm not sure and to be clear this is a government school oh this is a government school okay no now no, i don't defend it <laughs> wait actually i do i don't know um, i mean it's a school i think it makes sense for the government to be able to what do you think and this is something I'm pretty torn on, honestly, because I've seen yeah. other people, granted, they were people who were um, from other organizations that were defending the girls. So there's been a lot of organizations that have come in and really taken up their cause and made it, made, made it the huge story that it is. And they were saying, oh, well, it's not a problem when uh, Christian girls, you know, like maybe wear a crucifix or Hindu girls wear a bindi. Oh. And, but you have a problem with this. But when I was reading very carefully those statements and that doesn't seem like it didn't seem like it was necessarily anyone speaking specifically about that school. I want to know how applicable and how consistent this school's policy is. I haven't been yeah, able I to do, find a I lot of clarity on that because if it was I, consistent across the board, then yes. No, it doesn't would, have I to would, be. It doesn't have to be consistent because this is not about no religious symbols. It doesn't seem like it. This is about, this is not our uniform because yes, you wear, the... because no wait because you, if this is like a school uniform a simple cross doesn't like really <laughs> make it so that you're not wearing the uniform do you know what i mean like you don't look like you don't look like you're not wearing the uniform if you just have a cr small cross hanging from your neck but if you change your outfit by this much then i don't know what that might be different maybe well, like what you go what complicates sure. it for me is that the school administrators are saying that this uniform is the way it is for an egalitarian approach 
to uh, education. Yes, you're right. So that's you're right, what right. makes me think about all religious symbols. I don't know what the technical verbiage is, but that kind of mm. language. If they're being, okay, so let's say this. If they're being consistent and like a Hindu symbol, like like if, I don't know, what is this called? The thing a you bindi? Put on your, yeah, that should be, it would, that wouldn't be allowed. Or a Sikh. Oh, wait, is this a boy and girl school or is this a girl school? Um, this is a girl school, I believe. No, so it's just going to be mostly about the hijab. But yeah, but if they are consistent, then I think it's it's fine. I don't see the issue. Unless, I don't know about the other accusations. I don't know how legit they are. But I think like a school gets to be able to decide that, yeah, the, in this school, we don't have any religious symbols in classes. I think a school should be able to decide that. Don't you think? Yeah, the, but there's a lot of people are saying that this is a violation of their religious freedom because it is a government school. It's literally called government government women's pre university college, or right. Um, so, so they should be able to have access to it regardless. Yeah, that's a that's an interesting point. But then in France, though, we defend uh, France doesn't allow this in their schools, and those are governmental schools as well. And mm -hmm. we support that. So if we support that and we don't support it here, then we're going to not be consistent. But the reasons why we support it in France is because of um, a lot of the the age issue. Mm -hmm. And for right. in uh, people from India in the live chat, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe a pre-university is basically equivalent in the United States to the upper levels of high school. Um, so it, it like call so in in the U.S. we sometimes call high schools like a, a, a college preparatory institution, but really it's a high school. Um, so if that's the case, and that would be the age range, um, then that would also apply in this case, the standard that we have in France. What do people think? Let us know. Um, I'm torn on this. I don't know if this is. I think we need we need to think about whether this is allowed or not. Also, we don't know they. If the accusations, some of the accusations are correct or not, but we should watch this video. What do you think? Um, it's uh not. I don't even. I don't think they're speaking in English. It's it's just them like standing there, like not allowed to enter the classroom. I think. Um, uh, they're just protesting. They're like, oh yeah. Everybody, everybody's going into class, and they're like, we can't go inside. Mm -hmm. How how Other old are they? Um, like I said, people correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe they're probably 17 or 18 before I, yeah. it's, I think it's before college. Yeah. I think like, if you want to make sure that schools don't have a job for children, you actually have to be children. You know what I mean? Like, I think at certain age, like age 17, you should be able to decide. I don't know. Like, I don't know what to, to think about this. It depends on uh, if they're being, so there's, okay. So the complications are, let me tell you how, if what situation would make it easy for us to support this, right? One, if this was not a governmental school, like if it was a private school, one, one, right? Two, if it was being consistent, they're like, oh, we're gonna be egalitarian, and we want to make sure like no, there's no religious symbols for anybody, right? If those two conditions were met, they would be easy. I would be like completely on the side of the school, okay? Um, but given that we don't know if they're like targeting only like Muslims, we don't know if they are or not, um, and given. I don't know how I, I have to think about the, if, if, if a school is government funded and now they're restricting access to somebody because of religious symbols, whether that is right or not, and then have to compare that with, with how France does it. But France, like the way France does it is like, the, it's across the board. It's not like every, like every school gets to decide that. Like, so th there's a difference in that as well. I have to think about like, well, does that make it better or does that make it worse? So I don't know. Let us know in the comments what do you think about this, like whether um, this is the right thing to do or not, right? And try yeah, to think things, about it. Yeah. If all things were equal, I would be on the side of the school from what I've read Even so it, far. Whether it's private or governmental? I think so. Yeah, okay. Well, all, it okay. depends on what the justification is if it's on the government side. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess so. Yeah, I, th I think it's against, if it's against consistently against all religious symbols, I would be on the side of the school as well. Yeah. Beep cool. Boop is saying, Atheist Republic, except for the Sikh turban, generally all other symbols aren't allowed. It's very interesting how Why the Sikhs Sikh like, get special privilege, privilege. constantly. <laughs> yeah, what? The, 
they carry they carry knives <laughs> that's what does it that's what that's what does it <laughs> yes, um it's also amazing how uh, the Sikh community uh, produces some of the most aggressive radicals that are ready to retaliate in the most aggressive manners and then yet <laughs> they, they have been famous for being uh, extremely tame and passive um having you know in, r r relative to others like they are they take their blasphemy very seriously oh it's hardcore <laughs> well I, I, would you well, say not it's all. a double-edged sword <laughs> <laughs> i'm going to leave now yeah please no Susanna, <laughs> <laughs> go away <laughs> oh yeah actually this is the, the actual reason somebody who's like not joking around yeah because of the yep yeah because of the separatist movement. Yeah, it could start something really bad. Um, oh, Kiki is providing a little bit of um, context that I think is, I forgot to mention that is important. So Kiki is saying, this is a government school in the BJP state of Karnataka. I'm suspicious as I feel it's about intimidating Muslims more than following rules. I doubt it'd be equal. Yes, I do think it is significant that this is happening in Karnataka because so much of the news we've been covering recently about um, the heightening tensions on an, uh, air, an extreme level are starting to come. Maybe it's just the news cycle and more is coming out of this out of this state than others. But I have noticed, um, at least through what I follow, anecdotal, um, that there does seem to be a a rise in tensions severely in Karnataka, um, and it does have to do partially with the elections in the area. Hmm. So interesting, interesting. Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.